In this video, we're going to be solving another question that's related to trigonometric identities. And this is a question from October, November 2019, paper 2, variant 2. All right, so let's get straight to it. So here the question says, and again, it's a five mark question, so you got to respect that. So tan x over 1 plus sec x plus 1 plus sec x upon tan x is equal to 2 sin x. Actually, we have to show that it's equal to 2 upon sin x, sorry. Okay, so, so fir first things first. Let's take out the LCM. So the LCM of one plus sec x into and tan x is just, it can be easily obtained by simply multiplying the two together. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. One plus sec x multiplied by tan x. So here we have the LCM, all right? So I'm gonna multiply this by tan x. And when I do that, this becomes tan squared x. Tan x times tan x becomes tan squared x. And this needs to get multiplied by 1 plus sec x. So that means I need to multiply this by 1 plus sec x also. And when I do that, bear in mind that this becomes 1 plus sec x, the whole thing squared, all right? So remember that the whole thing is gonna be squared, okay? So I'm not gonna copy equals to two sine x over and over again, okay? I'll just leave it here. We'll do that when we're towards, when we're almost done. In fact, we'll just show that it, the left-hand side is equal to two plus sine x, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand the numerator. So there's nothing I can do with tan squared x. So I'm just gonna let that be as it is. Now, if you wanna expand one plus sec x, the whole thing square, remember to use the, uh, remember to use the identity. Okay, so this is gonna become one plus two sec x plus sec squared x, okay? Now we'll see what can be done with this in the next couple of steps. But for now, we'll just let this be. And the denominator becomes one plus sec x times tan x. Okay, so here we have, we can see that we have tan squared x plus one. So if I if I look at the second identity over here, I can see that one plus tan squared a, or one plus tan squared x is basically equal to sec squared x. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna replace tan squared x with sec squared x and everything else just carried forward. Sorry, tan squared x plus one with sec squared x. So plus two sec x plus sec squared x. Make sure to, so, to show every single step and don't skip a step, basically. In short, don't skip a step. So one plus sec x times tan x. Okay, so sec squared x plus sec squared x is gonna become two sec squared x, just like how x squared and x squared when added together it gives you two x squared. So we have the same story here, plus two sec x. In the denominator, we have one plus sec x times tan x, so I think we're almost there. Okay, let's see. In the numerator, I can factor out two along with sec x, so when I do that, let's see what happens. This becomes, let's see, what does this become? This becomes uh, sec x plus one, and yeah, you can probably see where this is going, over one plus sec x times tan x, okay? So what happens next? is that sec x plus one and sec x plus one get canceled out. All right, just what we were hoping for. And now you're left with two sec x over tan x. Okay, at this point, the best thing that you can do is to bring everything in terms of sine and cos, okay? So that means I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, uh, I'm gonna change sec x into one upon cos x, all right? I hope you guys remember the three identities. I mentioned them in the, uh, in, the in the last video, so you can go check that out. And then, tan x can be replaced, so I'm just gonna write divided by, tan x is basically equal to sine x upon cos x, so I'm gonna replace it by sine x upon cos x. Okay, so let's see what this turns into. So this becomes two upon cos x, and what happens when you change division to multiplication? You take the reciprocal. So divided by sine x upon cos x basically turns into cos x upon sine x, and what happens next is just what we were hoping for. You have two upon sine x as your final answer. And that's exactly what the question wanted us to do. It wanted us to show that this whole thing, okay, is basically can be, can boil down to two upon sine x and that's exactly what has happened. So two upon sine x is indeed equal to two upon, sorry, two upon sine x is indeed equal to two upon sine x. And we can write what we love writing once we've done it correctly, hence shown. Okay, now, so this was part one, five marks for this part. Let's move to the next part, see what it says. So the next part says, hence solve the equation. Okay, so what's the what's the meaning of the using the word hence here? The meaning of uh, using the word hence here is so that you make use of the solution 
above, okay, of this, uh, the solution of the previous part. So we know now very well that all of this basically can be simplified and written as 2 upon sine x, okay, and this now is equal to 1 plus 3 sine x, okay, according to the question. Okay, so that means this is the equation that now we have to solve. So this is more like a trigonometric equation, okay? So the first thing I need to do is I need to cross multiply. So two remains as it is, sine x gets multiplied. So in fact, I can, I can do this directly. So one times sine x is gonna be sine x and three sine x times sine x is gonna be equal to three sine squared x. So this becomes three sine squared x. Okay, now let's shift everything on the right hand side. So we have zero equals to three sine squared x. So I'm gonna write the term with square first and then just sine x and then the constant, okay? So this is sort of like a quadratic equation, okay? In fact, we call these disguised quadratic equations. So you have a sine square, a sine, and then a constant. So it's like x square, x, and then a constant, okay? Exactly how we deal with quadratic equations. So this, let's write this nicely. So this can be written as three sine squared x plus sine x minus two equals to zero. Let me just shift this on the right slightly. Okay, now, so that means we need to solve a quadratic equation. So we're looking for factors of three times minus two, which is minus six. So we're looking for factors of minus six that when added together, give us positive one. So three and minus two, so three sine x plus three sine x minus two sine x minus two equals to zero. So in the first pair, I can very conveniently, sorry, this is sine squared. I can very conveniently factor out three along with the sine x. So I have sine x plus one. In the second pair, I can factor out minus two. So that way, there are two expressions inside the bracket turn out to be the same. That means we've done it correctly. This leads to the conclusion that three sine x minus two times sine x plus one equals to zero, which further leads to the conclusion that sine x is equals to two upon three, or I've skipped a step here. In fact, you know what, I'll just, I'll just do it. Let's not, let's be good students, let's not skip steps. So three sine x minus two equals to zero, which leads to the conclusion that sine x equals to two upon three, okay? Or sine x plus one equals to zero, which leads to the conclusion that sine x equals to minus one. Now, as far as zero, one, and minus one are concerned, these are critical values, okay? So when we're evaluating the inverse of these values, okay, be it sine, cos, and tan, we try not to use a calculator. In fact, we try to recall the shape of whatever trigonometric function it is that we have ended up with. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's first figure out sine x equals to, what to do with sine x equals to two upon three. So what I need to do with sine x equals to two upon three is the following. So sine is positive. Okay, now you got to keep in mind the range of x that's provided to us. So that goes from zero to one eighty. So zero, ninety. 180. So, so that means we can't go beyond the second quadrant. So in the first quadrant, we know very well that all trigonometric uh, functions are positive. In the second one, we know that sine is positive. In the third, it's tan. In the fourth, it's cos. And let me just grab my calculator real quick. Forgot to do that before the video. Okay, so yeah, here I am. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to find alpha for which we're gonna take the sine inverse of two upon three. So if I do that, alpha turns out to be, let's do that, sine inverse of two divided by three, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So 41.8 degrees, okay, so that means that you have two values here, both making two uh, uh, angles here, both making 41.8 degrees with the horizontal axis. So let's figure out what, let's figure out the value of theta, or x in this case. So x, since it's the first quadrant, is going to be 41.8 right so 41.8 degrees and in the second quadrant it's going to be 180 minus 41.8 so if i do that 180 minus answer so that gives me 138.2 degrees okay so now we have two values okay this may be the final answer but let's let's uh, sort this out also so sine x equals to minus one now the best thing you can do at this point is quickly draw us the graph of sine okay now if you know the graph of sine it should be at your fingertips at this point so this is what it looks like okay i can do a better job than that yeah okay no need to be too accurate with it okay uh, just the basic shape needs to be correct so we're looking the point at which sine is equals to minus one okay now let me tell you what the problem with the uh, what the, the problem with using a calculator is that if you use if you do sine inverse of minus one so you get minus 90 okay now there's nothing there's nothing we can do with minus 90 here because the range starts from zero and goes all the way to 180 
So we know that from prior knowledge, we should know in fact, that sine uh, at 90 is equals to one, at 180 it's back at zero, at 270 it's minus one, and at 360 it's zero again. So that means if you're looking for minus one, so at what value of x is it minus one? It's basically minus one at 270 degrees. So x is equals to 270 degrees, which apparently if you go back and if you look at the range, it's out of a range. So that means we're just gonna stick to these two answers and these are the two values of x for which tan x over one plus x sec x plus one plus sec x upon tan x is equal to one plus three sin x, okay? So that's, that's all for this video, this question in fact. I hope you guys understood this question. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. That's all for this video. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.